going to talk about plant nutrients and soil fertility. We'll start with the 17 essential elements that are required for plant growth. These 17 elements are considered essential because they were required for the completion of the plant's life cycle. They cannot be replaced by other elements, and they are all directly involved in plant metabolism. If any one of the 17 is missing or deficient, plant growth will be negatively impacted. We see that carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are needed in the very largest quantities, but we don't provide those in a fertilizer typically. That's because carbon is obtained through the air and hydrogen and oxygen are obtained in water. The other elements, they come from the soil and we call those mineral nutrients. We're going to label those as either macro or micronutrients. The micronutrients are called that because they're used in pretty large amounts. They are also used to build large molecules within the plant, such as proteins, ATP, DNA, or RNA. These molecules that have uh, mic macronutrients in them play essential roles in photosynthesis and respiration, and then transporting and storing sugars within the plant. They're very critical for controlling certain cellular processes, such as opening and closing of the stomata or developing cell walls. We'll break those mineral elements into two categories, primary and second, secondary. Primary macronutrients, those are the ones you see on the fertilizer analysis, the NPK, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The sec secondary macronutrients are magnesium, calcium, and sulfur. Micronutrients are used in much smaller amounts. Generally, they're involved working with enzymes and help to drive reactions in plants or are used to transfer energy. We see the list of those here, iron, zinc, molybdenum, manganese, boron, copper, chlorine, and nickel. These 14 neutral nutrients have to be taken up by the plant and for them to be taken up by the plant, they have to be in their elemental or simple molecule form. So for example, nitrates or calcium have to be in that form and they can't be in a more complex form, such as plant matter. They'll be present in a water solution in the soil as a charged ion, so either have a positive or a negative charge to them. You'll see that nitrate has a negative charge to it and calcium has a positive charge to it. Negatively charged ions are much more likely to leach out of the root zone. That's because soils are negatively charged, and so the two negative charged items will repel each other. Positive charge ions are attracted, especially to clay particles and organic matter, because clay and organic matter has a negative charge. And so the calcium is positive, the clay or the organic matter is negative, they will attract to each other. Complex forms of nutrients, such as found in dead plant matter, has to be broken down before the plants can use them. I said earlier that we see the nutrients in a soil solution. Well, the soil solution is water that's found in the soil pores and contains the nutrients. The nutrients must come in contact with roots in order to be taken into the plant. There are three ways that nutrients come in contact with plant roots. They are mass flow, ion diffusion, and root interception. The first one is called mass flow. This is pretty simple. It's just where nutrients are transported to the roots by water moving through the soil pores. Water moves through the soil. Uh, if there's enough water present, and is especially increased when water is lost through evaporation or transpiration. Ion diffusion is the next category. So this is when nutrients flow from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So the concentration difference is created when nutrients are extracted from the soil, from the soil solution near the roots. So if the plant takes up a nutrient that creates an area of low concentration, then more nutrients will fill that void. The last one is root interception. This is when nutrients become more available because roots grow into a new soil area. So as roots grow, the surface area increases and they come in contact with more ions in the soil solution. 
nutrients have a different types of mobility within the plant themselves. We're going to label plants plant nutrients as either mobile or immobile based on whether they move from one plant part to another or not. Mobile nutrients are transplant transported from older plant tissues to younger growing tissues. So we see deficiency symptoms in older leaves first at least. So for example, nitrogen is a mobile plant nutrient. If there's a deficiency all of a sudden in the soil in in nitrogen, we will move from the older leaves to the new growth. And so that old leaves will be the ones that are deficient and will show the yellowing. Immobile nutrients are not transplanted out of plant tissues. Once they're there, they stay there and are used. So the deficiency symptoms are usually found in the newer growth. As a plant grows, if it had enough of a certain, certain nutrient, such as calcium, It'd be in that tissue, and then as the calcium is used, then the new t new growth on the plant wouldn't have enough of it, and that's where you would see the symptom of it being deficient. Typical immobile, immobile nutrients include calcium, sulfur, boron, copper, iron, and manganese. We can categorize fertilizers as either synthetic or organic. Synthetic fertilizers are commercially manufactured. They don't harm soil or soil biolog biological activity if they're applied appropriately. Proper use provides for nutrients for plants and soil organisms. Organic fertilizers are those that are derived from some sort of natural occurring material, like cottonseed meal or blood meal, manure, compost, those types of things. The organic materials have to be decomposed before the plant can use them. They have to break down into those elemental forms of the nutrient. These Organic fertilizers are typically generally lower in nutrient content than the synthetic fertilizers. We also see fertilizers classified as either slow release or fast release. Slow release fertilizers, or sometimes called controlled release fertilizers, are designed to release their nutrients over time. This reduces the potential for nutrient loss within the soil because the fertilizer releases the, the nutrients throughout a longer span of time. So these slow release fertilizers can be applied less frequently and more of it can be applied without having any danger of plant damage. The fast release fertilizers provide all of those nutrients rapidly. They are available immediately to the plants. So that can propose a potential for plant injury if too much is applied. They also tend to be lower in cost per unit of, of nutrient compared to the slow-release fertilizers. The final thing that we'll cover are the four R's of fertilizer use. These four R's are intended to achieve the desired plant performance in an environmentally protective manner if used properly. So when we apply fertilizer, we want to see that it is the right product in the right rate at the right time applied in the right place. So the right product means we're only supplying those nutrients that are needed in the right form, so the correct elemental form, at the right rate. The right rate means we look at the plant needs, the nutrients that are currently present in the soil, and nutrients that could be available from other sources. So we don't overapply or underapply the amount. At the right time means we are applying when plants need the nutrients. So early growth typically or other periods of plant life cycle that has a high nutrient uptake need. And then in the right place. So where are you putting it? Is it broadcast on the soil? Is it banded? Is it point application or deep application? That will depend on the plant and the fertilizer. That is all for today.